Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because I have a very special guest. He's my good friend, Michael Moulton, and he is known as M2, The Rock, and he focuses on addiction. And he helps so many people with coping with addiction and moving on with their lives so they can have a help, happy, happy, healthy, and productive life. So I'm going to give the floor to my, my good friend, Michael Moulton. And before we go, I just want to make you uh, realize that he is part of our podcast community and he has his own podcast on the advisor so check him out listen to all his previous podcasts because they are really good and you're going to get something great out of them so michael take it away well thank you um um it's good to be back and really enjoy our, our friendship that we're developing and um i love what you're doing and i can't wait to have you on our show uh, because yeah. i want to you know hear about about your story and I can rib you about the Dallas Cowboys. So we are based in <laughs> Dallas. We are based in Dallas, Texas. And and thank you for everybody uh, tuning in and, and listening today and, or watching. So, you know, you and I talked offline about and you, you brought up a great question, like what are the 12 steps in a 12 step recovery and how does that work? And 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 I gave the response to you that, you know, the 12 steps of recovery is really made for everyone, you know, and M to the rock and myself, you know, I don't wave a flag for any support group. You know, I protect the anonymity of these groups. Uh, so, you know, when I mentioned like, like NAAA or anything that ends with a, I want everybody to know that I do respect the anonymity of these, of these programs, but, you know, the 12 step program, you know, there, you know, it's, I'll read this 12 step programs are international mutual aid programs supporting recovery from substance addictions, behavioral addictions, and compulsions developed in the 1930s. The first 12 step program alcoholics anonymous founded by Bill Wilson and Bob Smith aided its mentorship to overcome alcoholism. So it really goes back in history. It started with the Oxford group, um, you know, I, I guess that's in England. Is that correct? I think so. Yes. Um, the Oxford Oxford College, but you know, that's where it started as a as a Christian um a movement. And, you know, they kind of started out with like six steps, you know, and the first step, you know, we admitted that we were licked. That was the word for word what it was. And then Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob uh worked on it and and turned it into a 12 step program and I'd like to walk your viewers and listeners, you know, through that real quickly is, is what is it, you know? And if you want to break it down real simple, and it's been really helpful for me is that, you know, steps one, two, and three is simply trust God. And it's a God of your understanding. Okay. Um, 12 step recovery is not a religious program. It is a spiritual program. Um, and I want to emphasize that. So, uh, four through 11 is where we clean house. You know, we, we clean house and uh, we go back and, and look at the wreckage of our past that we have caused and we clean house. And then step 12 is having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we carry the message forward um, in any way that you can do it. Um, I do it. I'm not anonymous, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my bottom was so low, it was impossible for me to be anonymous because everybody knew I was a train wreck, drug addict, alcoholic. Uh, but what I was really doing is I was trying to find, um, you know, solutions to trauma, uh, pain and suffering. And so I was seeking everything visible to try to fix my invisible problems. So Let's just jump right into it, Stacey, if you don't mind. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's um, you know, step one is we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unmanageable. That's where we get into true honesty. And, and to break down step one, it's the most important step. Uh, and what's interesting about the 12 steps, the only time alcohol or drugs is mentioned is in step one. That's the only time it's mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. The rest of the steps, like I said earlier, it, it is a self inventory and then a spiritual waking and sharing it. But to break down is that we admitted that we were powerless over blank drugs, alcohol, sex, work, exercising, gambling, internet, everything 
visible that has become my source. Okay. Um, but it's actually a resource, <laughs> um, has made my life unmanageable. So if you're a family, if you're a family member of an active addict or alcoholic or, you know, infidelity, or if somebody is doing that in the blank, you're actually admitting that you're powerless over that person, right. you know, and that your life has become unmanageable. Let me break down the word powerless. Here's what it, here's, here's what that means. Um, I'm not going to drink today. I'm not going to do drugs today. So let's break down step one. Um, we admitted that we were powerless over blank. So in that blank, we can put anything in there that, that we could put our son or daughter's name in there that is an active addiction, okay? Uh, drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, pornography, work, exercise, service work, um, anything that has our life unmanageable, and we're powerless over that. So what does that look like? Okay, I'm not going to drink today, and I mean it, okay? Mm -hmm. And I end up drinking at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I can't stop. And I do it again. I'm powerless over this. I'm completely right. powerless over. It. And as a result of doing this for a long period of time, my life has become unmanageable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we know what that looks like. And it's progressive. You know, it's right. very progressive uh, in my story. And my life was completely unmanageable, not as a result of my action, stuff like that. It was simply a result of me putting substances into my body. Right. So that's step one. Step two is came to believe there's a power greater than ourselves to restore us to sanity. Okay. A lot of times when people talk of power greater than ourselves to restore us to sanity, they immediately start talking about God and religion and church. That's not what this is about. There is a power greater than ourselves to restore us to sanity. And what that is, is we start feeling the feeling of hope. And that is a result of being in a support group meeting and we connect with everybody in there. And like you're doing, shaking your head, yeah. that means there's a connection. That means I understand. I can relate to what you're saying. And we start feeling some hope. We don't feel like we're the only one thinking this way. Mm -hmm. And so what's interesting about that is that it's connection. And, and the spiritual principle behind, behind it is hope. Steps one and two have nothing to do with God. Okay. And this is where... I mean, I love the churches and what they do. And my personal story is, is I was told to go to church and to seek help for my addiction. And the first thing they told me, they go, have you accepted? And I said, I got a cocaine and an alcohol problem. And, you know, I want help, you know, yeah. well, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your savior? And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? I'm like, I just told you what I need help with. And they go, well, have you joined the church? And I'm like, oh man, kick rocks and I'm out. <laughs> okay. What they're saying, I, I get today, but they're but they're not listening, okay? Because it's steps one and two are not about God. Mm -hmm. So the more that we understand this power greater than ourselves, other than right. me, is helping me. Step three is when we made a decision to turn our wills and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Okay. Right. And that's where we make that decision to turn it over to a God of our understanding. For me, okay, it's Jesus Christ, and that works for me. It makes right. sense to me, okay? And and it, I got deeper into it. Now, people in a 12-step recovery after the third step, they go, oh, my God, we got to do a go to the fourth step, the dreaded fourth step, okay? <laughs> well, if I'm dreading doing step four, which is made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves, which is courage, vulnerability, okay? We start thinking about, okay, I got to share, write down all the bad things I am and all this. If that's the way we feel, we did step three wrong because why would a God of our understanding want to shame us, right. okay? So once we do step three correctly and we turn it over to God, we go in and, oh, let me touch on something. Mm -hmm. It is paramount. And the only way we do the 12 steps is with a mentor, a sponsor who yes. has worked through this and has long-term recovery. Okay. Right. You cannot add, I very rarely say you, but I, we, you, we cannot do this by ourselves. 
because mm-hmm. I lived my whole life making my own decisions and look where it got me. Right. right. But it's paramount to have that mentor. Okay. So a moral inventory of ourselves, it's like any business, they do an inventory. Okay. If I have a shoe company and I have red shoes and I have white shoes and I do an inventory, the white shoes are sold out and I got a lot of red shoes. What am I going to do? I got to get rid of these red shoes and order more white shoes. Okay. That right. is an inventory. Okay. But I also get to figure out, I made a really good decision on getting white shoes. So a moral inventory, we don't find out what we're bad at. We get to find out what our assets are. Okay. And so that's the great thing about step four. And we list our resentments and we list our fears. We do a a sex inventory. You know, was I selfish? What were the causes? What, What were the effects? And that's where in my previous story about if I have a resentment, I play a role in it. Okay. And it's interesting people in early recovery that really have gone through steps one and two, and they're feeling hope and they have that connection. What really happens is they go, I don't have any resentments. I feel great. Really? I mean, you've been clean for like eight months and you feel great. You don't have any resentments. And they go, yeah. I said, okay, perfect. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to write a list of everyone who owes you an apology. Oh, I can do that. And once they do that, there's like 50 people on there. And I said, okay, good. You just wrote your resentment list. Mm -hmm. If you feel like someone owes you an apology, it's because I have a resentment towards them. And today I can honestly say that no one owes me an apology. I don't expect an apology from anyone. Um, So that's step four. And then step five is we'll call it confession with our mentor or sponsor. And it's very important that men work with men and women work with women. It's very important. Okay. Because if we, if we mix the two, the motives, the flesh, uh, comes out and, um, we can't be in a relationship for the first year of recovery or until we work the 12 steps, because I got nothing to give anybody. Right. Right. So, um, we admit to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact natures of our wrong. Also, in steps four and five, we get to f- we get to answer that question of I don't know why I'm doing the things I'm doing. When people would ask me, like, why do you keep doing this? It's a cycle. We can see it coming. Why do you do it? I would get so angry. But the reason why I was angry that the true answer is is I don't know. And we get to find out in four and five, six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, all of our defects of character. We want to to remove them, procrastination, manipulation, um, lying, white lying, embellishing, you know, um, all the things, cussing, you know, just all these symptoms, these, and those are called relapse behaviors. So we get to realize when I start doing this, I'm relapsing, Right. you know, Um, you know, for the families, if I start, um, I'm in my head and I want to go look through my son or daughter's or husband or wife's phone, you know, wait a minute, what am I doing? I gave this to God and I've got to stay in my lane and work on me. Step seven, we humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Okay. All these things, God, we ask you to remove them every morning, just Take away, how can I be a service for you, God? Take these shortcomings away, all right? Our character right. defects. Now, now we're getting to some really important stuff, and this is why it's paramount to have a mentor or sponsor. Step eight is we made a list of all we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. We don't go do that, okay? And we work these steps in an order for a reason. For so long, it was like, Hey, just let me back in the house. I apologize and I'll stop drinking. Okay. Right. And they would let us come back in and we'd be drinking eight hours later or sneaking it, hiding it and all that. Okay. Right. That's why you work in order. Step eight, we don't go apologize and make amends. We just make a list and we walk through it with our mentor and sponsor each one because step nine is made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others example if someone were to have an affair okay and you don't go to that man and sit down with them say hey i need to make amends i slept with your wife 
Okay. Right. And he didn't know. He's like, whoa. Okay. That would injure others. Okay. Um, you know, there are people who will never forgive us. They don't understand it. And those people probably need to work a 12 step program. They're just yeah. comfortable in their resentments. Okay. We don't go stir that up. Um, and our mentor will say, we're not going to do this one. Well, how do we make that amends? My mentor had me write a letter to that person and I read it to my mentor and then we shredded it and threw it away, right. you know, to get that. What about someone who died? What about, and I owe them money. We make financial amends. What if someone died and I owed them $800? You know, mm -hmm. I heard a story one time is that, well, he's dead. We're going to write the letter. We're going to read it to each other, burn it or throw it away. But I want you to go buy um, eight $100 gift cards at Home Depot, Lowe's, or a grocery store. And I want you just to give it to someone that's in need. You know, mm -hmm. you can make that financial amends. There's different creative ways to do it, you know, right. but we make these amends for us. We make them for us. And a lot of the people that we, we approach, they go, man, I forgot all about that, you know, yeah. but I'm in my head the whole time thinking they're thinking about me the whole time. Mm -hmm. Or they, they respect it and it actually helps them. Yeah. So that is step nine and that's why it's paramount. But also we don't make amends because if they were to ask me the question, why did you do the things that you did? Because I worked steps one through nine, I can answer it. Right. I was selfish. Okay. I was thinking about me. Um, and I'm here to sit down with you to know how can I make this right? Right. And that's a true amends. And that's step nine. Then we get to step 10 and we continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, we have promptly admitted it. Okay. That is like every night I check myself every day is that, you know, did I, do I have a resentment? Okay. Mm -hmm. At night, do I have a resentment? Um, you know, do I owe anybody an amends? You know, like I call you up, you know, Hey Stacy, I, I know it's, getting bedtime and I want to call you up and say, you know what? Um, this is bothering me. You texted me this morning and, and I didn't respond back to it. I saw it. I just kept pushing it off and I, I procrastinated and, and I was wrong. And, you know, I apologize. And, and I don't say I'm never going to do it again, but I say, right. how can I make it right? And you're like going, dude, you're tripping. I mean, I, I'm not worried about it. You know, I need to yeah. get back to me. But I make the amends for me um, because it, that old saying, don't let the sun go down, you know, right. uh, being angry. And so it, that's what that is. Then we get to step 11 and we sought through prayer and meditation. Meditation is very powerful. And that's, that's not like, um, that may work <laughs> for some, but it may be me is I just get in a quiet place and just breathe because mm -hmm. I have because of my past trauma, I hold my breath. Yeah. Just breathe and oxygen feeds the brain and it, you feel good. It boosts, I don't know all the chemicals, dopamine, serotonin. Yeah. I, I think I know what I'm talking about, but I don't, but mm -hmm. just a deep breath. Like right now, just deep breath down to your toes and exhale. And I used to hear people say that I'm like, man, it's trash. No, <laughs> it works. You know, it really does work. And even, you know, Lee, will say, you know, breathe, you know, because I will literally hold my breath and I don't realize I'm doing it. meditation right. prayer. You, when we pray, we get honest with our God of our understanding, you know, no long King James version scripted repetitive, re, you know, repetitious ritual prayers. They don't work. Okay. Right. Get real with God. Talk to him like you and I talk, you right. know, why God, I need this. I want this, you know, help me see it through your perspective because I'm not seeing it because I'm seeing it through my perspective, mm -hmm. you know, help me with this. Amen. You know, those work, you know? Yeah. And so that's, you know, prayer material. I pray all day long. I mean, I, I, I just talk to him. I just, okay, God, I'm about to be on the show with Stacy. I got stuff to do. I breathe. And I said, you know, just put the words in my mouth so I can be a service to help someone. Yeah. you know, someone. Then once we finish that, okay, having had, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message 
to others and practice these principles in our affair, in all of our affairs. Okay. Yeah. So I want to show the world who Christ or God is. I don't want to tell them. I want them to see it. Yeah. I, and the way they see it is when we are vulnerable, you know, vulnerable is brave. Yeah. Transparency is brave. And that's when someone will say, man, when you walk into the room, you just light the room up, you know, mm -hmm. and, and there's just something about you that I want. And we don't even say a word. Okay. Right. We can walk into the room and darken the room. Okay. Active addiction. When someone walks in and they're trashed, it, you see it yeah. because it's what's happening within. Right. But when we have a spiritual awakening and the spirit is working through us, it works the same way. Mm -hmm. Something happening within, there is a visible result. And that's how we carry the message forward, you know, for, for moms and dads who have lost a kid to drug and alcohol overdose. Okay. Right. What is the solution? Work these steps. Okay. And having the awakening, you get to pay it forward to help another mom and dad right. who is suffering with this saying, yes. and, and they can relate. You know, they, they, they find a power greater than themselves that can restore them to sanity, step two, and they right. have some hope because there's connection. Yeah. And that is a brief, you know, overview of, of the 12 steps. Steps one, two, and three is trust God. Four through 11 is clean house. And then step 12, we carry the message forward by our actions, not our words. Right. And it is... It's saving a lot of lives. It changes a lot of lives. And I challenge everyone to work a 12-step program, not by yourself, with a mentor who has gone through that. And your life will be changed forever. You know, there are three pertinent ideas in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Once again, I'm not representing anything, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's powerful. It says, A, that we were alcoholic drug addict, gambler, sexaholic, whatever holic it is, anything visible that has become your source and has made your life unmanageable, okay? Yeah. That we were that and could not manage our own lives. B, that probably no human power could have relieved us of our addiction. And C, that God could and would if he were sought. Mm -hmm. In closing... It's not a religious program. It's right. a spiritual program. Mm -hmm. And so that is uh, the 12 steps of, um, of recovery. And I hope this helps. And there are spiritual principles behind each step. You know, the spiritual principles behind step one is honesty. Step two is hope. Step mm -hmm. three is faith. Step four is courage. Five is integrity. Six is willingness. Seven is humility. Eight is self-discipline uh, and nine. Um, and then step 10 is um, perseverance. Step 11 is spiritual awareness. And step 12 is service. And I can't serve if I cannot provide a solution for resentments. Right. And that's it. Does that make sense? Oh my God, it makes so much sense. And what I love about yeah. it is that you could take these these steps and apply it to any any part of your life. You know, you don't have to be, you know, a quote unquote addict, you know, even though we all we all have ad addiction tendencies, everybody does, you know, but you could take this and, you know, apply it to your life and live your life with these principles and you actually can become a better person and become a happier person and actually serve your community and, and serve yourself in, in many ways and, and really turn your life around just by applying these 12 steps, because you don't have to, you know, hit the bottle or be doing drugs to, to do a 12, 12 step program. You, it could, you could just take those principles apply it to your life and you could see a vast improvement in your life, you know, within, you know, months. Definitely. I think it's beautifully said, you know, and, you know, me personally, what I've realized, and, and I hope your audience can relate to this is that my whole life, I was leaning on resources 
Okay. But I wasn't turning to the source. Mm -hmm. Okay. Resources were becoming my idols. Yeah. That's when I say we are all addicts. Mm -hmm. And when I catch myself leaning on resources that I think is the source, I'm in relapse mode. Right. Right. So when I turn to the source, the source, God, Christ, when I turn to that, they provide the resource. Yeah. And that's why our world and culture today provides these false resources mm -hmm. uh, that keep us in chaos and confusion because yeah. it's spirit, mind, and body. And mm -hmm. if that gets out of order, there's chaos in my life. Okay. Yeah. The spirit feeds my mind yes, and the mind feeds my body. Yes. And that's when they go, God, you look so good. You, mm -hmm. you have look, you have come so far because that's in order. Okay. Yes. If it was the drugs and alcohol feeding my mind and then my mind feeding my body as a result of that source, mm -hmm. I looked horrible, yeah. but I thought I looked good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and that's a great example of how that works. And I always say that, you know, it's your spirit that feeds your mind and then your mind feeds your body. And because a lot of people have it mixed up and they think that the mind really feeds the body and then comes the spirit. But really, it's 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 the, the spirit that feeds the mind. It's like your heart, your your spirit, your inner self is always speaking to your mind and your mind is always giving your your body the, the, the tools and it's talking to you. And, and, and if you listen, you will, you will hear the guidance, you will hear the direction. It's just getting to that point where you're in that spiritual mode, where you could understand who you are as a person and really understand the signs when your body is giving you the signs or words are going through your head, or you're getting that intuition or your body's reacting a certain way. It's, it's your body talking to you. It's your body yeah. giving you guidance and telling you direction. And, and, and it's up to us. Are we going to listen? Are we going to really connect with our, our inner self and, and really listen to what it's trying to tell us? Beautiful. That's so well said. I mean, that's so well said. And, you know, it is, um, it, it, it's the 12 step. It's a, it's about progress, not perfection. Right. You know, um, you know, I sat here and it just hit my brain for a second. Okay. That I want to apologize to you about the glitch that happened because my Bluetooth got disconnected and <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't hear, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and so I'm powerless over that. Right. It just happened, you know, mm -hmm. and we adjust and we pivot. We don't, you know, the old me, I would have got mad and I would have said it's on your side or, you know, I wouldn't yeah. take any responsibility. It just happened, you know, right. and, and we just, and we just roll with it. Yeah. Um, so it's, um, you know, that that's where I see growth was I'm sitting here thinking about that. I used to get right. tense and uptight. Oh my God, I'm a, I didn't do good. And I'll, it ain't about me. Right. It ain't about me. Yeah. Um, and so that's growth for me. And I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this topic today. Yeah, me too. You know, and, and I think we have so many perfectionists in our society. And, you know, I don't believe in the word perfection, because there is no such thing. And nope. you know, people have to kind of roll with it, you know, because things aren't going to turn out exactly the way you want it. And, you know, everyone has their own individual perception of what they think perfection is, but perfection does not exist in our society. And when things don't go exactly the way we want them to, we have to just accept it and just keep going, you know, and, yeah. and there are reasons sometimes why things don't happen the way it is. I, I, sometimes I believe, you know, everything happens for a reason. And if it doesn't exactly happen the way we want, you got to just learn how to accept it and move on, right. you know, and that's a good point. You know, there's, there's, there is nothing wrong and God wants us to, you know, to set our goals high. Mm -hmm. Okay. But make sure it serves him. Okay. Right. Not to serve, serve me. Right. But we set our goals high, but we lean on him as the source to reach those goals. Mm -hmm. The enemy, the disease, the dark side, uh, Satan, that's how he works on us to go. First of all, you can't make that goal. Mm -hmm. There ain't no way. Um, you're no good and all that stuff. And that's where we we can't hear that. And that's where it's really important to have a mentor or a sponsor or a therapist to, to run these thoughts by yeah. and they'll just sit there and go, no, 
you have set great goals and you are worthy and you can get it. And, but here's the key. Do not have expectations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because when we, we shared in the last show, expectations, 100% of the time, 100% always sets us up for resentments. Yeah. Always sets us up for resentments. So set goals, but no expectations. And when we set those goals, okay, we set the goals um, as, in making sure that it glorifies God of your understanding. For me, it's Christ. glorifies that, <laughs> that it's not about me and that my motives are pure. Right. And that's what's working for me today. Do I, when my eyes are open, do I do that? If I'm, if I'm awake for 16 hours, am I doing that for 16 hours a day? No. Right. But when I get disconnected, I recognize it. Mm -hmm. I will recognize it. And that's what the 12 steps um, have taught me. Now, the 12 steps I have learned today and writing this book that we're doing 300 miles is that I've gone back and opened doors and looked at my childhood trauma. And I looked at my trauma throughout my life that, you know, happened to me. The 12 steps helped me understand the role I played in it. Mm -hmm. It has helped me forgive. And I've truly forgiven everyone. Yeah. And I see why God allowed it to happen. I see it through his perspective. Mm -hmm. I have been told to seek therapy on my trauma. Um, and I just kind of shrugged it. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm going to make that move uh, to go seek therapy on my trauma. And because as a result of doing that, my spirituality will actually get larger, Definitely. larger. So there are some things that the 12 steps um, can help me recognize. Right. But I have to may seek outside sources to address uh, this trauma. And right. that's the order that it worked for me. Um, because a lot of times we, we, we go work, you know, with, with the trauma and we leave, well, I'm not saying we, you know, as a kid, I would go see these psychiatrists and psychologists because the parents, they just fix them. He's just hyper. Yeah. Um, but it never helped me because I couldn't get honest. I didn't feel safe. Right. Um, and I always felt like I was a victim, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't understand. So right. for me, the 12 steps help me understand. I go, you know what? I need to go seek this, you know, seek yeah. help for this. So. I think one of the biggest things that I learned is that we have to realize that the past is the past. We can't change the past. We need to focus on the present and, you know, make constructive changes in the present and to build a, a positive and sustaining future. And I think, you know, that was one of the biggest things that really hit me is when, when I was taught that, because we tend as, as individuals, so many people hold on to their past and they can't let go, but we can't change right. it. So what's the point? Let's end with this. When we, when we go into the future alone in our head, there's anxiety, worry, yes. paranoia. Okay. Mm -hmm. When we go into the future with our mentor, sponsor, therapist. So when we go in the future together, yeah. there's hope. Right. When we go into the past alone, there's resentment, anger, rage, you know, depression. Mm -hmm. You know, depression is a huge topic. Oh, you know, 100% yeah. of the times when I'm depressed, I'm thinking about me, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, sometimes I get just real comfortable there. I just want to stay there, you know? Right. Um, but when we go into the past, all right, with someone else yeah, to look at something, mm -hmm. guess what we get? Wisdom. Mm -hmm. And we get to see it. When we go into the past with someone else, that's where I get to see things through God's perspective and go, ah, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And then I get to share that with others. Yeah. You know, you know, our book is, you know, 300 miles is we're not demonizing anybody, nothing like that. Actually, when they close the book, the people who did me wrong, Okay. I realized the life that they grew up in it was the only tools they had. Yeah. And then I also realized, I also realized um, that, you know, how I look at it through God's perspective and, and not mine. And right. in the book, um, when they close and finish the book, those people are actually the heroes 
that got me to where I'm at today by me looking at my role yeah. and looking at it through God's perspective. Right. And I think that's very important is that we sometimes we have to look at the past, but we have to also acknowledge our mistakes and and forgive others also for their mistakes. Because, you know, sometimes when you look back and you think about how what sho the shoes that those people walk through and maybe the dysfunctionalism that they had to go through in life, maybe that's why they are who they were. And, you know, that's why they are who they are today is because they had that dysfunctionalism going on in their family. And that's all they knew because that was the environment they grew up in. That's and correct. And that it, is absolutely correct. And, you know, it's a um, it's a great program uh, for everyone, you know, to work. And, you know, they have Celebrate Recovery. They have, you know, all the A's, AA, NA, CA, HA. Yeah. Um, you know, they have Al-Anon, al and, you know, it's all 12 step and, you know, and once again, I don't represent in the groups, but those are the ones, you know, that are all out there that are public. You can Google any of them, you know, right. and, and so um, it's the most successful program. If you look at percentages and all that, that is the most successful program that's out there and didn't cost anything. I mean, right. you, you put a dollar in the jar or two dollars in the <laughs> jar. You don't have to put anything in the jar. Right. It's fully self-supporting. So if you had to take everything that we talked about today and you and and you know emphasize on a couple important factors, what what turning points, what what things would you like to emphasize that you think would really help people understand the importance, you know, that the message that you're trying to get across today? If you we I don't know why we are doing the things that we are doing. Mm -hmm. This program will answer that question. Right. Because the problem with me always is what's going on inside me. Yes. And I have to address that. And, you know, on step four, we talk about resentments. You know, the first person I put on my resentment list was me. Mm -hmm. Because I that's what I was the most resentful at, didn't realize it uh, because, and that's where I started looking at the role that I played in it. Because right. if I have a resentment, I play a role in it. So yeah. to take away that is to answer those questions. I don't know why I'm getting angry. I don't know why I yell, scream, cuss, where's this coming from? I don't know why um, you know, I'm addicted to all these things, all right? And when my loved one is saying, why are you doing this all the time? Why do you play golf nine days a week? You know, and, and, you know, all this stuff deep down inside the answer is, I don't know. We don't want to say that, but we get angry Yeah, because we're hearing what we need to hear. And that's the takeaway on this is that the 12 steps will answer that question. It will make you a better businessman. It will make mm -hmm. you a woman. It'll make you a better leader. Um, it will and create a, a spirituality like no other. Um, and a lot of people out there, like we're raising the meaning of rock bottom. What does that mean at M to the rock? Everybody who still has everything. That's not my story yet. Okay. Right. This is the time to do that, to do that inventory on yourself. Right. Now, when your book is, is your book currently out right now? Oh no! In fact, that, right when we get off this show, I'm, I get right back on Zoom to do writing session. We're looking at August September release two thousand twenty-four. Oh, nice. yeah. oh, that's awesome! Because I really look a, forward to reading it. Yeah, and, and you know, doing the book is you know going you know back into the past, and that's when I really realized you know my my addiction psychiatrist has suggested it to me to get help on my trauma. I haven't done it. Uh, my sponsor suggested it, and that's where he taught me that the 12 steps, there's some things that, you know, it'll expose it that you need more help on yeah. that a sponsor is not qualified to do. Right. Um, you know, my my sponsor is a world-known traveling singer, songwriter, musician. He goes, that's what I do. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. And, you know, and and then my fiance, you know, brought to my team, who's brilliant, who is, you know, we're starting a series on the brain, you know, a, a seven- 
a seven, seven episode series on the brain and, Very you cool. know, she suggested it. And then I was, um, and so I am, um, and then the, back to the book, it, I really realized, um, I have undealt trauma. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm doing it wrong. I just need to deal with this and see why stuff is triggering me as a result of writing, you know, working on this book. Yeah. Because once again, doing the book, I'm vulnerable. I'm transparent. I'm putting it all out there. Yeah. Um, on my actions, my actions. And so, um, I want to, um, in fact, I start, uh, therapy this Thursday, um, driving down to San Antonio, Texas to, he was just a guest on our show, Dr. Rob Kelly, mm -hmm. who is a trauma specialist and recovering and in male. Um, and so I'm gonna go down there and work with him for three straight days. And so I look forward to that. That's awesome. I'm not willing to do it. I'm not doing it because anyone told me I'm mm -hmm. doing it because I want to. Right. Because I want this pain to go away. Yeah. And that's important. You know, we have yeah. to do it because we want to. And, you know, so many times I, I have tried to push people to do things because I know it would be better for them. But if the person's not willing to do it then it, it's, it's, a, it's a useless cause. They have to hit that rock bottom, you know, their own rock bottom and want right. to change, you know, in order to change. Uh, and, yeah. and keep in mind what you just said there, they had to hit their own rock bottom, but at M2 the rock and what we are doing, we are trying to raise the bottom. Yeah. And how do we do that is by me sharing my personal experience, strength and hope, what it was like, what happened and what it's like today to raise the bottom. For mm -hmm. families, the loved ones, and for the people who are um, seeking visible things to fix their invisible problems. Right. Okay. You know, um, so that's what that's what our goal is to raise that bottom. Yeah. And I, I think that's amazing. And I, I think that's so needed in our society. And I, I love also the part about forgiveness and your 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 technique on forgiveness, because I feel like mm -hmm. it, it wasn't you don't have to hear the other person say, I'm sorry. It's you writing that forgiveness letter and letting it go, just letting it go. You know, That's I right. forgive you. You know, they might have been in the wrong, but we might have also actions that contributed to it. We have to be honest with ourselves and we just have to let go. And like you just rip the letter, like you said and let go. And I felt like when I started to forgive others and not have to hear them say it, because so many people want to hear the other person say it, I feel, I felt like a brick was just lifted upon me, Yeah, you know, and it was like, an well, remember if, if, remember what I said, based on my personal experience, if I am wanting to hear someone apologize to me, okay. It's because I have a resentment yes. towards them. Mm -hmm. So I really can't forgive them. Right. Okay, because true forgiveness is accepting the role that I play in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, true acceptance has no resentments. Yeah, that's what it is. Very true. So true. Now, if people want to get in, in contact with you, where can they find you? Go to our website um, to uh, M2, the number two, the rock dot com. Um, great website. It's got resources. It's got, um, you know, a, a place where you can donate to our nonprofit that helps people what we're talking about, uh, that financially can't afford it. And we, they go through a vetting system where we need to know that they're willing, you know? Right. Um, you know, and so we do that and provide, you know, scholarships for them, um, to do that to M2 approved, uh, facilities. That means I have toured it met with the owners um, and I approve it and it's, it's legit. There's a lot of dirty treatment centers out there. Yeah. Um, and then I also make sure that they have programs for the families, you know, it addresses everything. Right. Um, you know, that's our, you know, the nonprofit. And then you can, you know, book, you know, have to have me come speak or be on a show. There's a, there's a page to book, you know, M2 and then all sorts of, of data. So that's M2 at M2therock.com. And on each page are social media handles to, to follow us uh, to um, for our social media team is great. So we always pumping out daily, you know, inspirational stuff that everyone can relate to. Right. You know, it's not about drugs and alcohol. It's for yeah. all of us. It's all of them. Yes, definitely. This has been amazing, Michael. Again, Stacy, you're amazing. <laughs> 
Well, you're amazing too. I, I yeah. love having you on the show and I'm so glad you took the time out today to come here and, and talk about this. And, and I think it's so important that people understand that the 12, the 12 step program is not just about for the quote unquote drug addict or alcoholic, you know, it is for everyone and it could be yeah. applied in everyone's life and make such a huge impact in everybody's right. life. If they took the time to understand it, to learn it, to absorb it and to live it. It will change. Listen, I, we'll end with this, okay? Work the 12 steps. And if you haven't felt a spiritual awakening or change in your life, we will refund all your misery. Yes. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate um, it. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's, I can't wait to talk to you next time. Everybody, Michael will be on. Yeah, he's coming on. You know, uh, you know, every every uh, every couple of weeks he comes on and he talks about great topics. So you know, keep an ear open. Listen to his previous podcast, and he'll be back soon to talk about some other great stuff. So thank you again, Michael. It's been wonderful. Thank you, and thank you to all your viewers and listeners. Oh, you're so welcome. Have a great day. <laughs>